What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Stevo and it's time for Wow, I think we're actually all the way into uh week seven No, we're into week eight, actually at the Indigo League of Legends. Uh and of course week eight is up against Wamar, and I should be having my battle with him pretty shortly. I did want to take a moment and go over my team with you all. Uh, not really a full team analysis or anything like that, but I wanted to explain what I brought. Uh, of course, War Lamar, I have to battle on Showdown again. And so that alleviated some of my breeding concerns for this week, so that's nice. Uh, up first, of course, we have Fortress. I decided to go with Overcourt Fortress, even though I'm not bringing um, my Snow Warning Auroras. Uh, Overcoat Fortress is a solid switch into his Breloom, whereas Breloom can't really touch Fortress. Uh, then I can Volt Switch out as he tries to bring a Magnazone or set up Entry Hazards for free. That's nice there. I really like Toxic Spikes against his team. Um, toxic Spikes are gonna hit most of his team, and those that aren't uh, don't like Stealth Rock, so we're pretty good there. Toxic Spikes really puts a lot of pressure on his more offensive Pokemon like Victini and Zoroark, because they only have so much HP to play around with, uh, being more offensive and, and more likely to carry Life Orb. Um, it'll also allow me to see if Breloom, I don't think he'll bring Breloom just because of the Pokemon I can have, but if his Breloom is Poison Heal, then I'll know it a little bit faster that way, too. Um, yeah, and definitely Volt Switch over Gyro Ball. There's a good chance of him bringing Magnezone, and I don't want to be stuck in there against it. Uh, if he brings Magnezone, I do think it'll be Scarf, too. And speaking of Scarfers, we'll have two Scarfers this week. The first being Aurorus. Uh, you'll see that I've chosen Hyper Voice, and that's really just to punish any attempts on his behalf to substitute. Any weird sub Breeze Gligar, sub Focus Punch or Drain Punch Breloom. Uh, Zoroark sometimes throws up substitutes. Um, and then Pinsir also likes to hide behind substitutes. So I'll be able to outspeed all those with the Choice Scarf and hit them with a Hyper Voice going right through that sub, which is really, really nice. Uh, just really only need Earth Power for coverage. Uh, Regirock. Victini, um, and to a lesser extent, Omastar and uh, Magnezone. None of them like Earth Power. And then at the last, I guess, Freeze Dry is here for Suicune. But if it's a if it's a Crocoon, I won't really want to stay in on it anyway. Uh, Rotom is my other Scarfer, meant to serve as a secondary check for Pinsir uh, with the Scarf. That way, I can outspeed it whether he's regular Pinsir or Mega Pinsir. And if he's using Quick Attack, uh, it won't really be able to break Rotom down, and then I can Volt Switch out of there. Also, it allows me to check any Victini variant that's not Scarf, so if he is Scarf, he has to lock himself into something, and that allows Lipard to come in with some shenanigans, uh, and slow it down with Thunder Wave. And of course, it also gives me a decent switch into Ambipom if he's going for Fake Out. I do have to watch out for Ambipom using any of its Dark-type coverage moves, of course. Uh, Rotom is also fast enough to outspeed Omastar, after it gets a Shell Smash. So, nice secondary check there. Shadow Ball has fantastic neutral coverage against his entire team outside of Ambipom and Tauros. And uh, Tauros could be Scarfed, I suppose, but Tauros' best thing to hit Rotom, I think, is in Headbutt for the most part, maybe Rock Slide or something like that. Uh, so really only worried about Ambipom there. Lightheart is a nice team support Pokemon here, just with Thunder Wave and Copycat. If he gets too froggy with any of his setup sweepers, such as Omastar using Hydro Pump or Surf, or um, even something like Victini using V-Create. With the Sun Up, if Victini is under a certain amount of HP, about a, right around 40%, I think, I can copycat that V-Create and smack it right back. Um, same thing for Zoroark using physical fighting type coverage against my team, because uh, it does hit Karata and Aurora's pretty hard. I can send that back at him. And then um, same thing with Pinsir, actually, because if he uses Quick Attack, I can now prioritize that with my Lipart having a higher base speed coming off Copycat. I can hit him with his own Quick Attack, which will be super effective, so that's why we're going Life Orb there. Um, and then you turn just to keep a little bit of momentum on my end of the field. If I bring in Lipart against, say, a non-Scar Victini, it might be a little bit better to U-turn in that circumstance. Now, Crawdon, I decided to go Life Orb this time with just enough speed to outspeed... Um, a really fast Magnezone or a max speed uh, Omastar. It'll also allow me to outspeed max, uh, I'm sorry, max HP, max defense Suicune without any investment. I only need 244, so throw a little bit more in HP there and then just go max attack 
Um, I am using Charizard Y, but I think I have enough time here where if I need to, the sun will go down and I can spam Aqua Jet, or if I have an opportunity to against, um, basically if he, if I have uh, Crawdon in against Regirock, I can set up a Swords Dance. Granted, he could just paralyze me, but I definitely want to make him regret doing so. I have to be careful though, because Regirock does get uh, weird coverage moves like Drain Punch and Fire Punch, which I actually am a little worried about for choice against Regirock in that circumstance. Uh, and then my last member, of course, is Charizard Y. I'm running a, uh, um, um, I'm sorry, I think that's a hasty nature, I believe. Naive, sorry. I'm running a, a naive nature because I am utilizing Earthquake here. A Fire Blast followed by an Earthquake has a decent chance to KO Victini if he tries to switch in. And of course he's risking that speed tie. Uh, Earthquake also hits, um, especially defensive Regirock, a little bit harder. It's kind of negligible. But I'm also worried about him changing the weather with some of these Pokemon too. And so I don't want to be locked into my uh, Solar Beam. Also, if he's, I don't know why he would expect Dragon type coverage, but if he brings in Magnezone, then I can definitely punish him there, and I don't have to risk going for Fire Blast. Um, when I do use a Timid Charizard, I like to use Fire Blast just to kind of make up for the power loss, or, and that's why I do like using Modest a lot of the time, because the power loss is definitely noticeable. So this is the team for Wilmar. The Pokemon I'm expecting him to bring are Mega Pinsir, Suicune, Breloom, either Tauros or Ambipom. I don't think he'll bring both to this matchup. Victini, and probably Zoroark. He could bring Magnezone. I just feel like Magnezone really struggles against several of my team members. Granted, I'm not bringing very many things that threaten Magnezone, but between having um, Magnezone can't really touch Drick Algae really, uh, Embor outspeeds and crushes it. Rhyperior can outspeed and crush it. Um, and he could trap in an Aggron, but then Aggron just crushes it with Earthquake. So I don't think he'll bring Magnezone, but uh, if he does, I've planned for that contingency. So we'll look forward to this battle, and I'll have that shortly. All right, and we are back. It's time for the battle. And actually, he went with almost exactly what I expected him to. Uh, Based on this team matchup, I definitely expect Victini to be Scarfed. I could also see Scarf Breloom here, although Fortress is still a great switch into it. Um, he's probably either going to lead with his Victini or uh, Amipom is what I would expect. Um, unfortunately, I can't quite KO Victini with a Shadow Ball, just because it has such great natural bulk. So I'll need to whittle it down just a little bit first. Um, hmm... Who are we going to lead with here? Charizard is not a terrible lead. If he starts off with Victini, then if he if I lead Charizard, then I can switch right out into my Fortress. If he starts out with Regirock, then I can do the same thing. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to lead Charizard here just to see. Or I could also lead with Crawdon here just to put on a lot of pressure too. Um, but I, no, let's just go ahead and lead Charizard. I think that's going to be the best overall. And he also doesn't have any ground types, so actually leading with Rotom might not be bad, because then I can just use a Volt Switch here. So actually, let's go with that. He leads out with Ambipom, which is fantastic. Now he can't fake me out, at least. And I'm really tempted to just Will-O-Wisp right here. Um, just in case he goes, I don't know, does something weird. But Volt Switch here seems to be the best move. I can Volt Switch out into Charizard to avoid a possible knockoff. So yeah, we're going to go for that. Oh, it was in a... It was a Zord. That was very risky, actually. He could have just sucker punched me in the face. Um, since he stayed in, I'm assuming he's going to go for a Dark-type move. Uh, I don't really want Charizard to take any unnecessary damage. So that means that my switch in is... From there, I can KO him with the uh, Aqua Jet, actually. And I'll resist the Dark-type move. So yeah, that'll keep some pressure on him. So let's just go into that. He does just go for Dark Pulse. Wow, that is a lie. Is he Life Orb? He definitely is. Wow. Um, and I'm assuming he doesn't have Sucker Punch because he didn't go for it. So we're definitely just going to Aqua Jet here. He'll probably go out in a Breloom, I would imagine. But uh, okay. Or he'll just let Zoroark die, which is fine by me, let me tell you. Now we see the real Ambipom. It is pretty risky to switch into Rotom here because he could definitely just go for Knockoff. Uh, he also might have Fire Punch. The Fortress is not a reliable switch in either. I'm going to switch into Fortress just to um, see if he goes for the knockoff or anything like that. 
That'll also make him take a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage. He just goes straight for Fake Out, which is fine by me. Uh, and now I need to scout to see if he does have Fire Punch, because if he has it, he's probably going to go for it right here. So let's go out into Charizard. And he does have Fire Punch. All right, so that is good to know. If he has Fire Punch, I don't think he will have uh, his... Um, Zami Palm gives all three elemental punches, I'm pretty sure. So I don't think he'll have Thunder Punch. So that makes Fire Blast, Fire Blast a pretty safe play here. Um, I actually need to calc to see. I'm not sure a Solar Beam is a good move here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't really see... Well, let's just go straight for Fire Blast. He'll probably switch. Oh, he's just going to stay in. He has Ice Punch. That's not going to cut it. And Ambi Palm is just going to get obliterated. I think he overpredicted just a little bit there. Uh, and he probably has Fire Punch on this thing too, honestly. Um, whereas I have Earthquake, I think he's just going to go straight for the Rock-type move here, though. Uh, so I can at least go out here and get my Stealth Rocks up, which will really punish his other Pokemon. So we're just going to go right on the Fortress. Hopefully he doesn't have Fire Punch on his um, Red Rock either. That's what I would hope for. So, And he goes for Thunder Wave, so I definitely am happy I switched out right there. Hopefully we can get our rocks up. Actually, let's see. Well, here Toxic Spice might be a little bit better. Because in that way, if he has Pinsir in and he gets it, just a single layer. Well, I guess I'll just go for Stealth Rocks first to see if I can get him up. Um, okay, so I do get the Stealth Rocks on the field, which is fantastic. Pinsir cannot one-hit KO me, which is really, really nice. So we're just going to put up a layer of Toxic Spikes, hopefully. He goes for Swords Dance. I do get up the layer of Toxic Spikes, which is really, really nice. And now, uh, let's just go for Volt Switch, because he's getting really greedy. So we just get to go for a Volt Switch here, and go out into... Uh, go out into... Well, I could paralyze him with my Life Part. I am faster with Rotom, although I'm not sure, actually, if I, if I can live a plus four... Quick attack. I know I can live a plus two one, but I didn't count for plus four. But if I go out into Rotom and he knocks it out, then I can just come in and paralyze him, so that's not terrible. Uh, so we're just going to go straight for Volt Switch here. Of course, he's going to go for Quick Attack. Well, he goes for Endure, interestingly. Um, he did live it, though. And, hmm, that means my next play is actually just to go back out into Fortress. Uh, if he hits me with anything other than Earthquake, he's gonna die. So now I can just Volt Switch again. He goes for Flail. Wow, I did not see that coming. So I'm happy I had the Rocky Helmet on Fortress. That was really important there. That he could have put in some serious work on my team. But now he's most likely gonna go out into Victini if it's Scarfed. If it's not Scarfed, to go out into um, probably Breloom, because that way he can just pivot back into the Crawdon. So, so expecting Victini, I'm going to go into my Crawdon. He does go into Breloom. He gets Poison, which is really, really nice. Uh, let's see what move he has, though. Um, if he goes for... I don't have my dedicated switch into Breloom anymore. If he goes for Spore, then I really would rather that hit. Um, at this point, Aurorus actually isn't very useful because it doesn't outspeed anything that he has. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's Scarfed. There we go. It's hard to... I was preparing so much for the Kanto Classic that I forgot. Uh, now I have items. So, actually, in this situation, I'm expecting him to just go for a Fighting-type move. He's been playing pretty straightforward this whole time. If he goes for Spore, though, I'll have to play around that. So, we're going to go on in a Rotom here. He just goes for Rock Tomb, expecting Charizard, so... Even though I just took... Okay, and he's definitely Technician using Rock Tomb there, and he took the damage from uh, Poison, too. Uh, I would really prefer it if he were burned, but I love that extra damage from that. Now, he actually didn't take any Life Orb recoil. I'm not sure what item he's holding. But even after the drop, I should be faster just because I have a Scarf. So let's just get some solid damage on him, which is really, really nice. He does take out Rotom, but Rotom did a fantastic job this battle. Um, actually, I can just go on in the light part and click copycat, but I'm afraid of missing the rock tomb. So in that circumstance, I think that's the best thing I can do, though, actually. Um, yeah, that's the best thing I can do. That's just the safest option is to copycat his move, because that's the only way I can make sure that I'm faster. So there's the rock tomb to knock him out. 
which is pretty nice. Um, and actually, if he brings in Victini, I can copycat Rock Tomb again. So I don't know if he knows that's how that works or not, but I would love to actually, yeah, I would I would love to just get that extra damage because obviously he scarfed the way he brought it in there. Um, so yeah, we're just going to click copycat again and drop the Rock Tomb on him. He'll lower his speed this way. Let's see what he goes for, which is just V-Create right off the... He's not messing around at all. Okay, and this battle is essentially over, though, because now I can just go out into um, my Aurorus. And then I can just click... Uh, from here, I think I can just click Hyper Voice over and over and over again. Um, yeah, because if he switches out, he dies on his return. So, yep, Hyper Voice all day. So that's it for Victini. And then Retrorock comes in, but I don't think it can one-hit KO me, and if it's physically defensive, um, that should be it. So let's see how much this Hyper Voice does. Oh uh, yeah, very clean two-hit KO. He misses his Rock Slide, but Aurorus is bulk, his natural HP is high enough, so that I don't think that that mattered. And that's going to be it. So thank you very much for the battle, Wamar. Uh, for my little quick team planning there, that actually turned out pretty well against the skilled battler too. Unfortunately that breaks Lamar's uh, win streak. I think he had won his last three battles in the Indigo League of Legends. But hey, this starts our two game winning streak. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you did enjoy. And I will talk to you guys next time. See you later.